It is time now for a little baseball conversation. Norman James in London, Ontario, my podcast partner in crime, joins us, the one and only Michael P. Agello in Chictawaga, New York. So Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will make his long-awaited Major League debut tonight. I'm reading an article on MLB.com right now projecting his first 10 seasons. They have him compared to everyone from Mel Ott to Albert Bell or Joey Bell to Hank Aaron, Mike. Hank Aaron, Miguel Cabrera, are the expectations placed on this young kid's shoulders too mm-hmm. high or right about where you think they are considering his father, Vladimir Guerrero Sr.? Well, uh, my first reaction is, can we calm the bleep down? Because I, I, I believe me, I think he's the best prospect in the game, and I understand there's not much to be excited about. When it comes to the Blue Jays, uh, you know this year, you know they're they're not they're going to be one of the worst teams in the American League. Um, they're 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 in a rebuild, and that's you know that that makes sense with where they're going. And they have other prospects in Bo Bichette and Kevin Biggio and others. But I I, I mean I, I was up in Toronto yesterday for the locker cleanout for the Maple Leafs and talking to some other reporters and you know them buying tickets for the game and this is a signature event and it is and you always want to be at the first game of a guy who you think is going to be a star but cool your jets don't put too much pressure on this guy he's done unbelievably well at Triple A he's hitting you know 500 foot home runs. But, you know, we've seen stories where guys like this come up to the major leagues and they feel the pressure and they don't do well and they end up back in AAA and then they come back and then they're hit, they're hit, they'll have success. I hope for the best because he seems to be a good kid. Uh, he's an, a wonderful talent. And you're right. He, he comes from a, a great bloodline, a Hall of Fame bloodline in Vladimir Guerrero Sr. But I'm just a little conscious of the fact that everybody is saying, oh, my God, here, here comes the savior. And what if he hits 210 in, a, in the mm-hmm. first month? Hmm. Well, the projection for this season, 21 home runs, a 4.1 war, comparable to Bryce Harper's 2013 season. An optimistic projection right out there with Frank Robinson's 1956 year. Wow, 330, 402, 560, 27 mm-hmm. home runs, a 5.7 war. I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this guy unpack his talents, but... You know, here's another question, Mike. If you were a New York Yankee and all of this hoopla were going on, would you still say calm Mm. the F down? Or are you feeling, well, this is more appropriate because he's in the center of the baseball universe? Even more so because of all the, all the, no, I think, I think Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has the pressure of the entire organization on his shoulders because they're expecting him to be a star. I mean, and you remember, I think he's what, 21 years old? Uh, you know, Aaron Judge came up at 24, and in his first, and before he got injured at the end of his first year, I think he played like a month and a half. He hit he hit less than 200, and he struck out more than half the time. It took him another year uh, of of basically just you know maturing more, and then having the great rookie year that he had. Now everybody matures differently, and I think that Guerrero has the advantage of basically being around baseball his entire life, like Ken Griffey Jr. did with his dad when he played for the Yankees in Cincinnati and other teams. So that's definitely an advantage. But I'm just concerned, and I'm, it may be, you know, too much, but I'm just concerned of the pressure and the focus that will be on him from the very outset. A little bit of Jays, a little bit of Yankees. Lots of baseball. Aaron Judge. You can compare Vladimir Guerrero's singular expectation as from what he's, you know, been built into with the fact that mm-hmm. no matter who comes up through the pipeline in New York, if there's a little bit of expectation on you, it's exacerbated times a thousand considering, you know, you're playing at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the life, the this the hubbub leading up to this debut, I mean, probably only equals Harper. I mean, I remember, I remember Kerry Wood back in the day with, with the Cubs. But if you look at like some of the like, top prospects in the game, when they finally came up, you know, Chris Bryant with the Cubs, Ben attendee with the Red Sox, Ronald Acuna with, uh, with Atlanta, there was a lead up, there was an excitement, but nothing to this. I mean, this mm-hmm. is basically like, you know, Zeus uh, ascending <laughs> Mount Olympus. I mean, let's let's calm. No, I, I let's hear. calm down. So the Jays swept the Oakland A's out west. 
they've come back to, to take on the A's for a three-game set over the weekend. The expectation for the Blue Jays season is not great. Who knows? It might be a little bit better than people are projecting, but really it doesn't matter that much as long as guys are developing. So I, I anticipate the Jays <laughs> losing two of three to the A's this weekend because Blue Jays. Um, it, I mean, that it, that it is what it is. You know what's funny is you look at a guy like Eric Sogard and then another one in Clay Buckholz playing for the Blue Jays. I, it's the rando players looking for jobs, guys just trying to extend the careers. But I've never, mm-hmm. I never think of those guys, especially Clay Buckholz and all his years with the Red Sox playing for the Toronto Blue Jays. I guess that's a sign of where the Blue Jays are, right? They've got all these kids coming yeah. up. They've got a few guys that they want to see if we'll, they'll be a part of the plan going forward and then other guys who are essentially you know, roster fillers. I mean, it's smart on the part of Shapiro and Atkins to go out and look for reclamation projects because you can flip those guys at the trade deadline. If, if Buckholz pitches well and he's his ERA is in the threes at the deadline, then you can trade a guy who you brought in on an invite for basically nothing and get something for him. And I still think that the main focus of the Blue Jays is to replenish their minor league system. I mean, I am of the belief that we saw Pilar traded – that you saw Morales traded. I'm of the belief that by July 31st, you could see Stroman traded. You could see Smoke traded. You could see Sanchez really? if you could ever stay healthy traded. Yes, because they that's following the same model that Shapiro did in Cleveland. Basically, scorched earth, build up the prospects, and and you know your your cornerstone player is the guy who will wear. I believe he's going to wear number 27, his dad's number. Uh, in Toronto tonight that's that's the plan and I think you'll see Bichette and Biggio and those guys called up either by the end of the year or early next year but this is a plan where you have to you know get you know clear out the salary of and some of these older players and bring in the young kids and bring them up all at the same time and accept the pain but in a few years you'll have a bunch of young players who'll be very talented if they get rid of Aaron Sanchez who is the pillar of the staff of the future, Mike, you'll have all these great position players, but that's the thing. Would, would Aaron Sanchez not at least give you a, a horse, sometimes dominant pitcher in this league to well, build around? You said the key words, if he's healthy, but also the contractual situation of, I believe him and Stroman have through next year, before uh, under control before they become unrestricted free agents and if you don't think that you can sign them for a long-term contract for a, a price point that you think is valid then you have to maximize the value of them by getting as much as you can for them before the july 31st deadline or maybe at the winter meetings after the season but i i think that's the plan i i don't see i don't see that i don't definitely don't see them re-signing marcus stroman i think no. he's um, you know, he's a distracting influence uh, and, you know, sometimes a pain in the butt. And I, I don't think he's somebody you build a team and a rotation around. I think the future is bright for the Blue Jays position players. You can have the greatest hitters on the planet. If you don't have a pitching staff, you're not going to win anything. Never mind what's going on with the Blue Jays and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Let's talk about the Luke Voigt era in New York. <laughs> Seven bombs, 19 RBIs is the Yankees head into San Francisco to take on Kevin Pillar and the San Francisco Giants. Paxton and Bumgarner get the series going uh, pitching-wise. L- Luke Voigt, I mean, is he, is he the new star in New York now? He's the only one standing right now. I mean, he's the only one that's not hurt. I mean, it, and it's amazing that I think they've won six of their last seven. Where You know, Greg Bird is out. Uh, Gregorius was out, Andujar, Stanton, Judge, Fraser. I mean, I can keep going, believe me. I mean, they I think they had 12 or 13 guys on the injured list. And Luke Voigt, you know, he started the year batting sixth, and now he's batting second. He's batting in the Aaron Judge spot. So, I mean, it's amazing that they've been able to win. And their pitching hasn't been that great. I mean, Tanaka got uh, lit up yesterday. But, you know, they're getting performances out of Domingo German and uh, Sabathia coming back off of the heart problems. It's, it's really amazing that they're have, they have this much of a decent record 
you know, four or five games over 500 right now with as many injuries and they're going to get their players back and then we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's, I, I think they, the, the Yankees are very fortunate to be where they are right now with as many injuries as they have. And the fact that the Red Sox have sort of choked the bone after winning the world series last year. And that's always a good thing on this podcast. Any failure from the Boston Red Sox is applauded. The Yankees are a plus 25 in the uh, runs for and against differential. So that's a, that's a plus. And the AL East looks a bit like a dog's breakfast right now. If this continues for a, a few months, I mean, the Yankees can hover around 500 all they want. You know they're going to kickstart it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always sort of a settling in. I mean, I know that the old saying is you can, you know, you can't win a pennant in April, but you can lose it. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't think the Red Sox are out of it in the division, even though they started, you know, I think they're like seven and 14 right now. Um, you know, they have enough talent that they'll rebound. I just look at the, at the Blue Jays, look at it realistically and say, you know, this is a team that has already started to sort of pare down their roster and mm-hmm. move out veterans. The real, the realistic view is this is a rebuilding team and it's going to take two or three years, but the sooner that you get your young players in and get them acclimated to the major leagues, the better. Oh, last thing up uh, the Yankees, you know, when they get their guys back, it's, it's going to be an absolute horror show for uh, opposing pitchers much to the delight of Yankees fans everywhere. Right now, if you could start penciling in the Yankees' needs, the essentials to get past Boston, win the East, and win a World Series for the first time in 10 years, what would it be? Well, probably a starting pitcher because the, the, the one person who is out – um, I mean, they expect Gregorius to be back by August, but they prepared for that with, and they have the ability to move Torres to shortstop, but Severino's injury was supposed to be a couple weeks. And now I'm hearing July. So if he's out until July, that means his season is in doubt. And I don't think that they can really, uh, w- you know, they, they would have, they have a chance, but I don't think they can win a world series with Tanaka and Paxton as their one, two starters in the playoffs. So I think they'll probably have to go out and get themselves a starting pitcher. Just grab him, add him. Mike Fires versus Marcus Stroman at Rogers Center tonight. A's, J's. Need to the prediction, Mike. Will Vladimir Guerrero go deep tonight? No. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Hey, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, thanks, Norman.